In this video, we're going to be showing you the new web interface for the RXV6A receiver. You put in your IP address in the browser line, and then you type forward slash setup after that. That's going to bring you up to the, the new web interface. And that's going to give you the basic interface that the uh, old one had, but a little, little different in the arrangement, a little more options on that. Uh, you have the option to do speaker settings in here. Speaker power amp assign. Speaker size. Front presence layout. Subwoofer, if you're using a subwoofer or not, the phase. Distance. You can adjust the distance from the listening position to the individual speaker there. along with the speaker levels. And again, this is all done live. You have the option for the uh, graphical equalizer settings on here, and this is per speaker. So you have those adjustments for each individual speaker, left, right, center, right, or excuse me, center, surround left, surround right. This is a pretty advanced user setting. You have to have knowledge of the frequencies and where they sit and what they do in your particular listening application. There's also down there at the bottom speaker impedance. You can change it there. And that's the speaker settings. Now you have your sound. And there you have the various adjustments for sound, dynamic, adaptive DRC, lip sync options, delay. Audio inputs, if you wanna associate an audio input with one of the HCMI inputs, you can input trim where if you have one input that's really, really loud and one is really, really quiet, you can make that adjustment there. You have options for volume adjustments, initial volumes, volume memory. If you want to program volume memory into an application, you can do that there as well. More of an advanced side when somebody's using a universal remote or maybe a control system. And of course, DTS mode, if you need to make that adjustment. And that's gonna cover the sound. Next, we have the DSP modes. You can do DSP skip. So if you're doing the toggle, you can actually, you know, if you don't want hall or seller club, you can get rid of that, you can skip it. Same with uh, you know the, the program select, you can set that up in advance. So when you switch to that input, it goes to your favorite sound feature. Like seven channel stereo, maybe for Sirius XM or Pandora, maybe two channel stereo when you're listening to your turntable or your reel to reel tape or cassette deck. And then we have the individual adjustments for each DSP parameter. There are different adjustments for each one. They all don't have the same exact one, depending on what it is. But you can make the adjustments there. And keep in mind, there's an option to go back to defaults on there, just in case you don't like how you did it and you don't remember what the original setup was. You have that option there.
Next option is going to be for our scenes, and that gives you the ability to configure them there, add what you need, rename, etc. All those options that are available, you can do that. You can set it up there. And again, that's the same as what the on-screen menu is going to be. This just makes it easier with a laptop if you're receivers in an equipment room or equipment closet and you can't actually see the TV. This makes it a lot easier and a lot less cumbersome because you can use your mouse and your keyboard to make all the changes. And we have our zone scene options. There are zone scenes. They are somewhat limited, but they do give you a little more flexibility. So you don't have to make certain adjustments for certain listening sources in zone two. Then we have the video HDMI settings in here, and that's the basic HDMI control, HDMI out. Uh, you can do HDMI versions if you're having trouble with an older HDMI device. Sometimes changing that will give you the output. Um, video format output. Video out settings for each device. So if you don't want the video on with your phono, you can actually make sure that it's off. Then we have the network settings, which again is just like the, the menu system. But if you're doing a little more customizing or if you want to type in your password and such, you don't have to worry about not putting it in correctly or accidentally hitting the wrong button and not knowing it. Um, MAC address filtering, that's a lot easier if you do that. That's a more custom application, but just in case. And you have your Bluetooth, it's the same option as on-screen menu. You set up send, you can set up receive. Next, we have the tuner, and it's just the basic tuner settings on there. You can do your presets, which mode you want. Then we have the system settings where you can rename function lock tv inputs that's for arc specifically input skip so if you're using the toggle on there it makes it a lot easier if you only have three or four inputs you don't have to toggle through all of them uh input mode same thing uh you can make your adjustments there uh, input rename rename your inputs there Display settings, triggers, if you're using some type of a relay, this is more of a customized feature, but it's handy to do it there because you can actually visualize it as you're testing it. Information and the important initialize reset down there, you can actually do that there. You can do the network or all. And then we have the information tab, which is pretty basic, but just in case you need it for your network application, you have it there. And then we have the other options where you can actually reboot it, backup, restore, and the firmware update option there as well. That ends this video today. Thank you and have a great day.